everybody. Welcome to The Smattering. I am Jason Hall. I'm here with Jeff Santoro, and we are going to talk about three different dividend stocks. We're going to talk about the Home Depot. We're going to talk about Starbucks. We're going to talk about Target Corporation. Before we do that, though, just want to ask people out there, if you're watching us, if you're enjoying what Jeff and I are doing, please click on that subscribe button right there. And also check out our podcast. Any way that you find podcasts, we are the smattering podcast. It's pretty easy to find it, too. Lastly, I want to give a special thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool. We have a great partnership with The Motley Fool. They're sponsoring this video. If you're looking for The Motley Fool's 10 best stocks to buy right now, go to our link, fool.com slash the smattering. Put in some information. You get those 10 best stocks to buy right now. Jeff, all right, you ready to talk about some dividend stocks? Yeah, let's do it. We got Home Depot in purple. We've got Starbucks in yellow and in blue, we have Target. And as you can see, Target's dividend yield is way below where it has been over the past few years. Home Depot's is kind of on the high end of where it's been. And Starbucks is a little bit above where it has historically been as well. So of course, yield is the relationship between the company's stock price and the dollars of dividends that it's paid. All three of these companies have a record of growing their dividend, strong consumer businesses. Jeff, how do we want to do this? Well, it's important to remember that, like you said, they're strong businesses that can easily support their dividends. They're going to grow them over time. Neither of them or none of them at this point are in any sort of danger of like having their dividend cut or anything like that. And if you look at that chart, your first thought might be, oh, Home Depot is the best bet because it has the highest yield. But I think we both would argue that there's probably a lot of optimism already built in to the price and the yield you're getting. Um, they're probably best positioned out of the three for what's coming ahead when you think about the fact that they basically operate in a duopoly with Lowe's. Um, you know, they, they benefit whether housing is being built at a rapid pace because they uh, supply the contractors that build the houses, but then they also benefit if the housing market is in a downturn because when people aren't buying houses, they're spending more time at home renovating the houses they have. So in almost any scenario, you could make the argument that Home Depot is going to be in good shape. So while it has the highest yield, I don't think it's necessarily the best buy right now out of these three. Yeah, I, I agree with that. A couple of other good factors for Home Depot. The average age of a home in the United States, which is you know the key market for Home Depot, is coming up on 38 years, right? Old houses need people to do stuff to them. They need people to hire home improvement pros to do stuff. Houses are at record prices. There's no inventory, so that's keeping homes expensive. So like Jeff said, that's one of those things that's kind of good for Home Depot. Um, let's talk a little bit about Starbucks here right in the middle this is a company that, man, it's going. It's had its series of challenges over the past year. This is a company that has lost its CEO. He he stepped down. The thing was, Jeff, when he when he announced that he was going to be stepping down, the board had known for about a year that he had plans. Once they had kind of gotten through the worst of the pandemic, that he was going to step down. At the time, Roz Brewer was an executive with the company and a board member, and now she's the CEO over at Walgreens Boots Alliance. So bring back, roll in um, Howard Schultz again. We'll stick him in as CEO. He's been in CEO, and now they have named a replacement CEO, but I guess he's got to do like a – internship or something it feels like he's going to yeah, be like six months i think he's going to be on on the payroll before actually taking over as ceo yeah so it's it's weird you think about all the labor strife that the company has dealt with um and the, the challenges that it deals with uh, how important china is to its future the idea that china is going to be its biggest market it's actually close to being larger than the u.s in the next couple of years is going to be bigger than the u.s concerns about u.s and china trade relations there's a lot of uncertainties there. Jeff, what do, you, what do you think about Starbucks? Yeah, uncertainty is the first word that comes to mind. You know, it's it's actually kind of impressive that they've been able to recover um, so quickly. I mean, the pandemic just crushed them. You know, you think about how when everything was shut down, they just took a massive hit. And then even when the pandemic in, in the U.S. was starting to, to wane and people were going out again and their stores were reopening, that was when China entered its zero COVID policy. So they're still facing shutdowns over there. So there is a ton of uncertainty. There's a ton of uh, leadership uncertainty. Um, 
So, you know, the stock price has taken a hit. That's helped the yield. Um, but I'm not so sure that it would be my pick out of these three. All right, let's talk about Target here. So Target is our last one. Again, you look at that one on this dividend yield chart, and its yield has certainly shot up the most over the past year or so because of the stock price getting absolutely smashed down because the company had it having to revise guidance about sales. It's really struggling with some near-term pressures on on its top and bottom line, Jeff. Yeah, it has. And but in my mind, this is a temporary bump in the road for the company. They the the current management team has really shown over the past several years that they've made the right investments in the company and it really paid dividends, no pun intended, over the pandemic. Um by investing so much in their omni channel uh, capabilities, meaning you can walk into the store, you can buy items, you can order them online, have them shipped to your house. You can order them online, pick them up in the store. You can order them online and just drive up and have someone bring them out to your car. They started making those investments. They, they made a, an acquisition of a company that helped them with two-day delivery. So, so kind of to compete with Amazon in that sense. And all of a sudden the pandemic comes around and they're perfectly positioned to be the go-to place for people who need stuff during the pandemic, especially when we couldn't go in stores, we didn't want to touch things. Um, and now, so here they are, they, they overbought certain bulky items, be, you know, they just mismanaged their inventory. So they had to take a hit on that, but you Walmart's know, you dealing think, with the same thing, by the way, I think that's yep. important to acknowledge. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I don't think you can blame management teams for not figuring out accurately in all cases, how to navigate a pandemic. Um, we haven't had one for a hundred years. So you, you so it kind of makes sense that they miss that. But to me, if you zoom out, that's going to be a short-term blip in the road. And they're beautifully positioned with their omni-channel investments to continue to uh, please their customers, offer quality products at a low price in and allowing customers to buy them in any fashion they want online, in store, drive up, like we said. Um, so I, I really think that they're in, a, they're in good shape moving forward and might be my pick out of these three. But I want to know what you think. All right. So again, talk about Target just a little bit here while Starbucks is dealing with um, some real ch has had some real challenges in its C-suite, getting the right leadership in place for continuity. This is another thing that, that even with those near term issues that Target's dealing with, Target has done well. The companies had a policy that the CEO could would, would have to retire at 65. They've just changed that policy. So their current CEO whose fingerprints are all over this business and the transitions that they've made over the past decade he's going to be around um, for at least the next several years past turning 65. He's also the chairman of the board. So take it with a grain of salt, but you have continuity in leadership, which I think is really, really important for these sorts of businesses to have really good long-term strategies. So again, I think you're absolutely um, right about that, but let's do this. Let's think about it. We have Home Depot, we have Starbucks and we have Target. Sounds like you're leaning towards Target as being your pick here. I was initially thinking Home Depot might be my pick, but I do have some concerns that there might be too much optimism baked on into it right now, thinking about it. Now, on the other hand, Starbucks, I think as much as there are pressures, there's a lot of pessimism. I think it's the one to me that's the best one of these to buy right now. I think you buy it right now while there's so much concern. It's a wonderful brand. Essentially, its founder has taken the reins to get the ship pointed back in the right direction. The last time he did that, the next decade was incredible. I'm going to say Starbucks, Jeff. What about you? I'm going with Target. I agree with you that now's the time to get in on Starbucks if you are if you believe, as you just said, that they have that bright future ahead of them, especially with China. But to me, that's still there's too, there's still too much risk there. I feel like the, the short and maybe even long-term future for Target is a little bit more clear in my eyes, and it is still recovering from that massive hit from the inventory issue, which I do think is a short-term bump in the road. I'm going to go with Target. 